Maybe you have an old Android phone collecting dust in your drawer? So why don't you take advantage of his high resolution touchscreen, build in sensors and fast CPU and repurpose it in your microcontroller projects? You think it's too complicated? Not at all. In this solution you don't have to deal with complex Android SDKs or Java programming. With just a little Python coding you can get everything up and running smoothly. It's simple, beginner friendly and a great way to reuse old tech. Curious? So watch until the end. To do so, I gonna use Kiwi, an app development framework that works seamlessly across all major platforms, including Android and iOS. So let's dive right in and build an app. I must mention that the steps I'll show only work on Linux or a WSL environment for Windows. For editing I'm using Visual Studio Code, but feel free to use whichever editor you prefer. Here I've already created a small Kiwi app. This app will control an Arduino Nano with an ultrasonic distance sensor, a push button and some LEDs connected. Kiwi provides all the standard widgets you'd expect like push buttons and sliders, optimized for smaller displays like those on smartphones. For more specific components like this meter gauge you can explore the Kiwi Garden, a community driven space where users share custom made widgets for everyone to use. Eric, please explain us how to write an app with Kiwi. Sure. Writing an app with the Kiwi framework is not for noobs, but it's definitely not rocket science either. Let me quickly show you how to do this from scratch. In Kiwi, you can start to design the user interface even if there is almost no Python code. So you can start building your UI, even if the main class is completely empty. This works because in Kyvi, the UI can be defined in a separate file named main.kv. In this file, you'll find a hierarchical description of the UI, written in KV language. Like in other UI frameworks, you can mix the UI code with the program code if you prefer. Personally though, I like to keep everything cleanly separated. Want to see the result? Here it is. It's designed as a box layout with vertical orientation, which means its three children are stacked on top of each other. The first child is another box layout with horizontal orientation, featuring those three famous buttons. Do it! Just do it! The second box contains a slider and a label, while the third one has three grid layouts that include switches, checkboxes, and radio buttons. Cool! Now I'm eager to learn how this UI can interact with a microcontroller. To make that work, we need another library called Telemetrics. Telemetrics handles the serial communication between a Python program and an Arduino or other MCU boards. Its Python API provides methods for directly controlling the PWM or digital pins of a microcontroller much like the classic C function calls used in Arduino. And beyond that, Telemetrics also has methods for communicating over various serial protocols like I2C. It can even control our distance sensor and stepper motors. You can find the full feature list on its GitHub page. At initialization, Telemetrics requires the name of the serial port it will use to communicate with the microcontroller. Next, we need to set up the Arduino ports based on their intended functions, just like we would in an Arduino sketch. Input ports get a callback function as their second parameter. This function is triggered whenever the input value changes and receives the updated value as an argument. Output functions are used in the same way as they are in the Arduino framework. To integrate the sonar distance sensor into our Python program, simply call set pin mode sonar, providing the trigger pin, echo pin, and the callback function as parameters. Whenever a new value is available, the callback function is triggered with the distance value as an argument, and then it schedules the upgrade of the meter widget and its label. To prepare the Arduino, install telemetrics through the library manager. Just type telemetrics in the search field, and you'll see different versions available for various platforms. In our case, we'll select telemetrics for Arduino. Note that it has dependencies on other libraries, so make sure to click install all to get everything you need. Now go to the examples and open the telemetrics for Arduino example. 
then upload it to the board. Alright Eric, now let's start the app on the PC and see if it works. I click on connect to initialize telemetrics and wait a few seconds for everything to get ready. There we go, it's now showing the distance to my hand. I can toggle the white LED through the app using the touch button or the button next to the LED. I can also control its brightness with the slider. And check this out. If the angle slider is above the triangle, the green LED lights up. Otherwise, it's a red one. We are now only one step away from our Android app. Eric, it's your turn. But first I want to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Instead of assembling your circuits on messy breadboards, simply send them your Gerber files directly from KiCad via their plugin, specify your requirements and a few days later the boards will arrive. I love the high quality PCBs and that's why I love to work with PCBWay. Soldering is always fun and done in no time, even for beginners. And PCBWay not only makes PCBs, they do also offer CNC machining, sheet metal works, 3D printing and injection molding. Get everything you need for your awesome projects from one hand, so give them a try. Now back to the topic. Let's return to our main goal and get this running on an Android phone. To do this, our Python code and all its dependencies need to be bundled together with a Python interpreter into an Android package file. This package can then be transferred to the phone and run as an app. Fortunately, this entire process can be easily automated with the Buildozer tool. Instructions on how to install and use Buildozer are available on the Kivi website. There's also a link to the installation instructions. Buildozer only runs on Linux, not on Windows. If you're on Windows, you can however use the Windows subsystem for Linux or a virtual machine. I'm using a Linux VM here. To start Buildozer and create the app package, enter Buildozer Android Debug in the terminal. When you do this for the first time, Buildozer will download the Android SDK and build tools and everything it needs further. This process can take a few minutes depending on your internet connection. But if everything goes smoothly, you'll end up with the package file ready to go. But this is pretty useless if it just sits on your computer. The easiest way to deploy it to the phone is to type buildozer serve. This command starts a local HTTP server that the phone can access to download the app. On your phone's browser, enter the IP address of your Linux PC, followed by port 8000. You'll see the app file, touch it to download. Ignore the security warnings and touch keep. The download takes a few seconds, so I start my time machine to speed it up. When finished, open the downloaded file and start the installation. If Google wants to do a security scan, then start it and everyone will be happy. That's it. Everything looks like expected and all the widgets are responding. So let's connect it to the Arduino now. This can best be done with a split OTG cable like this one. The Arduino plugs into the USB-A connector while external power connects to the USB-C port. However, this setup only works if the phone supports power delivery, which most newer phones do. Okay, but why doesn't the app control the Arduino when it's running on Android? Remember, it did this perfectly fine on the PC. Unfortunately, Android doesn't provide these device files that we have on Linux. Handling USB devices on Android is more complex and requires working with the Android USB API. Extending telemetrics to support this API would have been too complicated, so I had to find another solution. That's when I discovered the TCP to UART bridge app. Simply tap connect to establish the serial over USB connection to the Arduino and grant the necessary permissions. Then switch to server mode and tap start. What happens now is that the TCPUART bridge creates an IP socket for serial communication. 
Instead of communicating directly with the serial port, my app connects to this socket, and the TCP Art Bridge app then forwards the messages to the Arduino via USB. This means that in the app, we need to replace the serial file descriptor with the IP address set to localhost and the IP port set to 8080, or whatever is configured in the TCP Art app. Let's build the app package again and deploy it to the phone. This can conveniently be done over Wi-Fi. For more details, check out the instructions linked in the video description. Now we can toggle the LED and adjust its brightness. And we see that the LED state shows in the app as well. The angle slider also works perfectly, switching the red and green LEDs as expected. But we can take it even further. Now I want the gravity sensor to control the angle slider and also manage the phone's flashlight LED. Eric, please show us. For this, Kiwi includes the plier library. Like Kiwi and Bulldozer, plier works across all major platforms, although it's best supported on Android. To use its gravity sensor, for example, we first need to import its gravity module. Then we enable it and can start reading the values. It's very simple. After another build, the gravity sensor now controls the red and the green LEDs. And in addition to the white LED on the breadboard, we can also control the camera flashlight. In this setup, the entire application runs on the phone, while the Arduino acts purely as a simple I.O. module. This is easy to set up. You only need to upload the Telemetrics 4 Android sketch once and reuse it through all of your projects. But the downside is that the Arduino circuit becomes completely non-functional without a phone connected. Additionally, since input values are sent to the phones and output values are sent back, there is some latency of at least 20 milliseconds. This could be an issue when short reaction times are important. However, these are not implemented in telemetrics. Is there a solution for that? The solution is not to use the telemetrics for Arduino example from before. Instead, write your own Arduino sketch that reads the distance sensor and controls the RGB LED without the phone being connected and also manages the push button and the white LED. This approach significantly reduces the delay since the button input and LED output signals are processed within the Arduino itself. Well done, but how exactly did you do this? Well, I took the example and turned it into a library. In its header file, it includes custom read and write functions that exchange values with the phone via the serial connection, enabling the program to interact seamlessly with the app. All that's left to do then is to call these functions in the main sketch. Here, for example, I send the distance value to the app. Okay, now our app is ready. Thank you for watching. See you soon.